Hello, this is Tom Wallace. I'm the managing partner here at Florida Funders and welcome to our angel investing podcast. We're all about learning best practices and getting better at angel investing. And the purpose of our podcast is to interview some of the, the best and brightest and most successful investors and entrepreneurs to learn from them what, how they've been successful, what makes them tick, what motivated them, and how they've been successful in investing and building really successful companies so, so that we can learn and become better investors and, and entrepreneurs in the process. My journey is maybe a little different. I came to Florida some 30 years ago. I've always been in technology. My partners and I had started a company up in Pittsburgh, which is where I'm originally from. And that company got acquired and we had a non-compete agreement. We were working in the personal computer space. And so there was an opportunity. We were working a lot with IBM and Compaq and Microsoft and companies like that. And there was an opportunity in Tampa for, uh, with IBM who we represented and, and they needed help down here. So that's what, that's what brought me here. Um, fell in love with Florida, fell in love with the weather, fell in love with the, the really so much Florida has going for it and started to build a business down here. And as we did that, we really saw, I mean, it's going back 30 years, the technology ecosystem in Florida at that time was very nascent. And there really weren't a lot of tech companies here. And, but there was a group of us. And the group got together, other founders, other entrepreneurs, and we'd get together and meet and help each other out with our businesses. And after a while, we started to say, hey, what can we do to change Florida? We want Florida. We don't want to go to Silicon Valley. We don't want to go to New York. We don't want to go to Austin. We love Florida. It's our home. But we want to lift up Florida, and we want to build the tech ecosystem, and how can we do that? One of the things we did was start the Tampa Bay Technology Forum back in the late 90s which was an organization focused on that, a nonprofit. Uh, along the way, one of the things that uh, we all believed in, the best thing we could do would be to build successful companies here, to employ hundreds or thousands of technology workers, have successful exits, invest in other companies. And this all happened over decades. And Florida's really come a long way. And now it's a, a very vibrant tech ecosystem that I think can compete with really almost anywhere in the United States, if not the world, maybe not Silicon Valley, because that's a very unique and special place. But I think we're up to 10 unicorns in the state of Florida. We're the third fastest growing state. And it used to be that our best and brightest entrepreneurs would leave here to go to, to, go to Silicon Valley or San Francisco or Austin to start their company. Now we're seeing the opposite. We're seeing companies coming out of California, coming here. You know, there's a lot of, re I mean, Florida is a very pro-business state. We have great tax laws. We have great weather. It's very affordable. So the cost of living for real estate living. And we have, and we have talent. Why does any area become known for technology? Two things. It comes down to capital and it comes down to talent. And we're really working on the capital side of it. That's what Florida Funders does. That's what we're dedicated to. And we're not the only ones. So there's a lot more venture capital and early stage capital and angel capital available now for startups in Florida. And there's a lot of talent here. And our universities are putting out really talented students, as well as there's people coming here from all over a thousand people to move to Florida every day. And they're coming from everywhere. They're coming from New York. They're coming from Boston. They're coming from California. And so the talent's coming here too. So we really have the makings of really what we think is the next great tech ecosystem in the United States. I always started companies with, with, with um, my best friend and we had built and sold a couple companies and I was angel investing and I ran across this company. I met the founder and it was in the online education space, which, which I was very much attracted to. I had been in kind of the offline education space. I love training and education and learning. Learning's always been a passion of mine. And it was 1999, so it was a dot-com boom. And um, what, what happened is uh, this company came out with online training for continuing education for engineers and architects. And it immediately took off because they met a real need in the marketplace. And that need was, hey, I can go to some hotel, sit there, pay all this money for a seminar for two days straight to get my 16 hours of continuing education to keep my engineer or architectural license current. 
Or now I can go online and not have to travel anywhere, not have to pay for a hotel, not have to be away from my family, my business, and do it all online. So as soon as this company got launched in 99, it immediately met a need and, and got some nice traction. I didn't meet the founder. And well, I met the founder maybe you know, in 99, maybe a little bit later, but I didn't get involved with the company till 2003. By that time, we were in the dot-com bust. And like a lot of online companies, this company started to struggle. And really, it was kind of a turnaround situation. And I, I, I came in as an angel investor. And I agreed to put so much money in the company um, with the founder. And then I started doing my due diligence. And as I started doing my due diligence, I started figuring out. And the founder never worked at this company. I need to share that. He, he started the company. He had his own consulting business. He provided content to the company because he was an engineer. Uh, which is very common, you know, he was, he had domain expertise in the space, but he had hired a team of people who were running the business. So when I did start doing my due diligence, the more I dug in, the more I realized that this company was r really in worse shape than I thought, and that they were actually having trouble making payroll, and that they weren't really even clear on exactly what their financial situation was, and they had a lot of unhappy customers because they didn't process credits and things like that. So I went back to the founder and said, hey, I'm going to pull out of the investment. I just don't think, you know, it's well run. And I don't know if you don't know what's going on over there or, or whatever. And he said, hey, I think you're right. What we really need is somebody to run the business. Why don't you, why don't you come in as a CEO and then you can run the, run the business and uh, kind of ride the bike before you buy it or buy part of it. So we worked out that deal and I ended up coming on as a CEO and then I ended up investing. And that was a 13 year run, which we, uh, my original investment, then we did a round of venture capital and later two, did two different rounds of private equity. We grew the business substantially for, from like a million to um, like 50 million in sales. We became a SaaS software company. It really wasn't a SaaS software company when we got there. Uh, we made a lot of smart moves and it turned out to be my best investment ever. It was about a 50, 55 X return on my investment. And so I, it really, um, it really was a great experience and was, was phenomenal because I got, got to get back together in business with my best friends. We got the band back together and, and uh, we did a lot of acquisitions along the way, learned a lot about venture capital, learned a lot about private equity, learned a lot about buying companies and integrating them and synergies and all that, all that good stuff. So, um, and then when I left there, then I decided, you know, angel investing is what I want to do full time. I've run businesses for 30 years. I know I can do that. Um, I, my days of being the quarterback and on the field and taking the punches and having the sleepless nights and the customers call me and dealing with all the issue, personnel problems with employees and all that are over. I want to be the coach now. I want to help the next generation of entrepreneurs. And um, I'm at that stage of my career. I think that's my best opportunity to give back. And so that brought me to Florida Funders and that's what we do. And we're dedicated to uh, finding funding and building the next, next generation of, of tech companies here in Florida. And, and a big part of that is really helping founders, not only writing checks and, and, and providing capital to them, but also working with them and mentoring them and helping them build and grow their business. So one of the things that Florida Funders offers to investors and our investors are unique because most of our investors did not make their wealth in technology, unlike me and my partners. Most of them made their wealth in real estate or insurance or hospitality or healthcare, but they realized that the future of Florida is technology and innovation. It's not tourism and strawberries. So um, I'll give an example. One of our investors is a, a big real estate developer and he does multifamily. He knows for for him to be able to rent his apartment buildings, and he builds 350 unit apartment buildings, we need, we need high paying jobs, we need, we need talent coming here, and we need opportunities for our young people so when they go to college and they get out of college, they stay here, they don't go off somewhere else. So a lot of our investors are in this because they believe the future of Florida, again, is technology and innovation. They want a place where our best and brightest entrepreneurs are staying here to start their companies and not going off to Silicon Valley or to Austin or to Boston, wherever. And so they believe in what we're doing and we give them the opportunity to get involved and invest 
And they don't have to know necessarily a lot about technology because that's kind of part of the value add that me and my partners add. Um, but at the same time, a lot of our a lot of our tech companies are, you know, real estate tech companies or restaurant tech plays or ed tech, fintech. So many of our investors have expertise in that domain. They just don't have the technology side of it. So it gives them an opportunity to help us evaluate those deals and 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 it gives them an opportunity to look at and they can they can invest in something they have knowledge of. So that's kind of that's a win-win as a part of you know, what we get out of our angel network. And our angel network's incredible. We have 1,500 investors who have expertise across every domain you can think of. And that adds tremendous value to what we do for founders. If we can not only write them a check, but also make introductions for them to early stage customers, bring people in and put a board member that can really help them understand the space, knows the competition, has a lot of contacts in the industry. That's a big part of the value add that we provide for our founders. Well, that wraps up our show today. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. If you're interested in learning more about angel investing and more about floridafunders.com, please visit our web website. Just as a quick reminder, Florida Funders is a hybrid between an accredited network of angel investors and a venture capital fund. And so we're out there combing the state looking for the best and brightest entrepreneurs and founders to back. So if you're a founder and you're looking for funding, feel free to go to our, our site and apply for funding. We'd love to take a look at your, your deal. And if you're an investor, please go out, sign up and join us as we work to change Florida from Sunshine State to Startup State as we execute on our mission, which is to make Florida as known for technology and innovation as we are today for the mouse and strawberries and tourism. Thank you so much.